Hello, this is Jane Applegate with the Center for Digital Strategies. I'm here today with Melody Tan. She's Senior Vice President, Strategy and Business Operations for MTV Networks. Welcome to Tuck. Thank you. It's so great. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming. Okay, um, what is uh, the MTV Networks and BET's video strategy right now? What platforms are you using to distribute content? I think MTV Networks and BET Networks is very focused on our consumers. So we follow where our consumers want to access our content. And as such, we are very judicious about windowing our content across platforms. So um, we think about when a piece of content goes on air versus when it becomes available online and on other platforms. And we treat each asset in many ways uniquely because our networks serve very different demographics, although they're mostly young young um, audiences, um, they're, they're nuanced as well. Um, in addition, every asset is also different, so every franchise is treated differently. So, uh, you know, a show um, like uh, The Daily Show or, or Colbert Report on um, Comedy Central can go up very quickly after the on-air premiere because it's um, very timely content. It's news content and it's um, in many ways disposable. You know, so you know the the timeliness is is critical. And then you have shows that you know we may never put online. Um, with full episodes, that there are only clips available. And then there are shows that are brand new and we want people to sample them and we put full episodes online for sneak previews. So we treat franchises and um, our networks uh, very differently as we put things across platforms. Since the theme of our Brit Technology Impact Series is uh, video content and the monetization of it, uh, what models are you using at your networks? Um, online, we have a number of initiatives. Um, they range from ad-supported content that consumers don't have to pay for, um, but they have to watch the ads, to download to own, where they pay per um, content, piece of content, whether that's a full episode or a mobile application, a ringtone, or games. Um, two subscriptions. So a consumer pays, you know, a fee per month to access a set of content. Um, for example, we have something like that for Nick Jr. We have a preschool offering online where kids can go and have lessons around, you know, reading and math. Um, and parents just pay, you know, a certain amount of dollars uh, per month. So we continue to experiment um, online in terms of business models, and we think about other ways to package all the wonderful content that we have. Um, but the underlying philosophy as we pursue these new business models is that um, our content is very valuable, and there has to be a value exchange um, for our content. Okay. And which platforms do your viewers favor? What when you do your uh, market research, what are you finding that the uh, younger viewers, you know, are they watching on their phones, on the laptops, or on traditional television? You know, it's very interesting. I think um, people expect the younger uh, generation to not be watching as much TV, but the, there's interesting research that confirms that they actually watch more. Um, you know, the age group from 12 to 34, I believe, added like an extra 30 minutes of TV viewing time to their total media usage. Um, and what they're doing is they're actually adding more hours into their 24-hour day. So they're parallel processing, um, but they're also watching more TV. Um, in terms of what they actually favor, I think they favor all of them in different ways. So, you know, if they're hanging out at home and wanting to have a lean back experience, they turn on their 50 inch t flat screen TV and enjoy high definition television. But then when they're on the run or waiting for a friend and their friend's late, they flip on their phone and watch, you know, some short clips of our shows. So I think that they're, they're, they actually are not favoring anyone specifically. I think they're using each platform depending on what the occasion is. And so they're, they're managing to fit all of this into their, their 24 hours that is now turning into 30 hours. <laughs> right. Yes. We, we heard that the consumption figures have gone up, you know, due to the, as you say, the mm -hmm. multitasking and doing everything right. at once. Um, Melody, if you had a crystal ball, where do you see this whole uh, video content consumption going? Where do you think we'll be in five years from now? I think five years is a long time to predict, but um, I think that um, 
people are still going to want their TV. Professionally, professionally produced content is still going to be, you know, the first things that people will watch. Um, a lot of the user-generated content really is, stems from professionally generated content. So it's people remaking a scene from you know, a movie or a TV show. Um, and I think that people do realize that there is a value exchange that needs to happen when they want professionally produced content. And so they will be willing to pay for content. I think the difference is they maybe pay once, and then they can consume the content wherever they want. So they can watch it on their television. They can take it onto their laptops, on their wireless phones. Um, they can you know, access their, their um, TV traveling abroad. So um, I think there is going to still be a value exchange for it. I think the difference is there's place shifting and time shifting. So people can really, truly consume paid TV wherever and whenever. And one more question. Um, what would you say is your greatest challenge right now as a content and programming strategist? I think it really is about um, keeping our pulse on all the new changes and all the disruptive technologies, but making sure that at the end of the day that our dual revenue stream, you know, like our affiliate revenues as well as our ad sales revenues are not only protected, but that they're growing. So, you know, going after the latest and greatest shiny thing, but um, at the same time potentially cratering or destroying value in your existing business doesn't make sense. Um, but there's a lot of, um, press around, you know, there's a lot of press value for the latest and greatest thing. And so it is about balancing, <clears throat> balancing pursuing the latest and greatest, but making sure that the commensurate value for our content is being generated. Terrific. Thank you so much. I've been speaking with Melody Town. She's Senior Vice President, Strategy and Business Operations for MTV Networks. Thanks Thank for you. coming up.